uh, as far as the misconceptions today, I'm going to be talking about some misconceptions that people have in the golf swing. And also, when they get information and they misinterpret that information, it can be good information. Okay, Most information that we are receiving is very ambiguous. All right, The first one is, this is probably the, the most common one. Keep your arm tucked in or keep your elbow in when you take the club back into the top of the backswing. Has anyone ever heard that? This is what I see a lot of. I'm going to exaggerate a little bit for your benefit, but right arm tucked in. Okay. I'm going to have it right against my rib cage. And it's right against there. I really am tucking it tight, right? Now, do you see anyone that plays golf that's any good that with an right arm like that? But I see it every single day. Okay. Um, now, when you get your arm right in here like this, there's absolutely nowhere for your arm to go on the way down. So there's about two options here. From here, you can either come in and your arm can be back like this, and then now the shaft's leaning backwards and you're going to hit fat shots and thin shots, okay, because now the club's working on its way up through, through impact. Or you can be in here really tight, and the first move then is you got to make room and you start to cast the club. Okay? I would say most people cast the club then, then get that arm stuck because they, they're trying to make room and create speed. Well, the right arm needs to move a very different way. I'm going to break it down as simply as I can. It might be a little technical, but it's going to be necessary to explain this. The right arm, some people may have also heard you've got to keep your arms in front of you Okay, as you take the club back. Keep your arms in front of you. What that means is, and I focus on the right arm, the right arm Obviously, I address lays down here close to your rib cage, right? The right arm, I'm not going to turn my shoulders at all yet. The right arm just works like this and like this. Now, there's going to be a little bit of play in there, but ideally speaking, in a perfect world, the arm works this way and this way. Not much more than 90 degrees here. So it looks like this from this side. Okay, now, when you combine that with the shoulder turn in posture, it looks like this, like this, and like that, okay? Now, is my right arm jammed against my rib cage? Okay, let's do it from this side. Just raise it up, bend it, and then turn, and you're just keeping that in front of your chest. That's nowhere near my rib cage, okay? So, what does, what does it really mean to keep your right arm in? It has less to do with your arm and more to do with your shoulder, okay? What, what creates this motion here? What's moving my arm? My shoulder is, right? So, and I'm going to show you a drill how to perform this and get your right arm working properly in just a second. But in the golf swing here and here, okay, that looks pretty good. I'm not in against, in against my ribcage. I got all kinds of room in here to swing, all right? But my upper arm is still in front of my chest, this one, okay? So, what's a good drill? Now, let, me, let me explain why this is important to have this arm off of your rib cage and rotate it inward. Right? It's a lot like throwing a baseball sidearm. So if you're going to throw a sidearm pitch, you're not going to be here, right? You're going to be here, and you're going to be here, and you're going to lead with this elbow. That's a very, very big uh, source of power and speed. If you're in here, that's not going to create a lot of speed. If you're out here, it will. So this is what it looks like when you do it properly. Okay? Arm elevate, the right arm bends. That's, that's kind of it broken down right there. I have all the room in the world to rotate, get the elbow working in front, and then I can release through. So, is that making sense to everybody, how this right arm is supposed to work? Now, here is, it's, it might be hard for you to coordinate that movement, right? This movement, and then turn your shoulders. So what you're going to do, this is called a square drill. This is called a square drill because you're going to have your left forearm, your upper arm here and your right arm, and your chest and your upper arm on your left arm. That creates a square, right? Everyone see that? Now you're just trying to maintain that square as you turn. Okay, now you bend your right elbow 90 degrees. Okay, and I got a full turn. That's exactly where you want to be. The elevation off your chest with the arms is done with this left arm. So my left arm is actually resting against my belly here. As I turn, it lifts off a little bit and I bend my right arm. Okay? And that's the top of the back swing. Now you're gonna have to practice that drill even to do it properly. Alright? I, I do a lot of time, I spend a lot of time in my teaching, teaching people how to do drills. It might sound funny, but you have to practice practicing. 
most people don't practice right. What's the number one advice given from a husband to a wife on the golf course? Stay home. Stay home, okay. Don't say a word. That, that's probably actually good advice from the from the wife to the husband. How about from the husband to the wife? Keep your head down, honey. Keep your head down. Okay. Keep your eye on the ball. Whatever you want to call it. Right? How many people have heard that before? So this is what you see. That was actually I that pretty good, actually. But. <laughs> But I see that all the time. Um, that usually when your wife is topping the ball, or when anyone's topping the ball, because we all do it, it, it it's for other reasons. Okay, it, it, there's there's some technique issues there. Keeping them their head down is only going to not allow them to turn through the golf shot. Okay, so it looks something like this. They need to be able to stay in posture, and they need to be able to sequence their body properly, but. I'm sure there's a whole body of work there. If they're topping a lot of shots, that needs to be needs to be worked out. Consult a PGA professional. But uh, you need to be able to turn turn through the golf shots. How about this? Hit down. You got to hit down on the golf ball. I mean, I, everyone should probably raise their hand. Almost if they played golf before, right? Thanks. We got one guy. Heard that? Two. All right. Three, four. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so hit down on the golf ball. Do we do we hit down on the golf ball? What does that mean? This, that means that this has to be traveling on the weight, with an iron anyways, right? That means that this club that needs to be traveling at a, a descending angle when you strike the golf ball. Would everyone agree with that? Is that true? Okay. So, my point is, hit down on the golf ball, that's not bad information. It's just ambiguous. There's no way of knowing how the heck to do it. Because, tell me if I'm hitting down on this ball. I hit down on it. All right, was that, was, that a good, was, that, was that a good swing? I see that all the time. I, mean, I hit down on it. The guy said I had to get hit down on it. Okay? Well, unfortunately, my head got about this far in front of the golf ball. My club was coming from the outside, and I cut down, and I just slashed it. Like I was chopping wood, right? So how, do we, how, how is the right way? What actually creates the downward strike? If, if, if this isn't what creates the downward strike on the golf ball, what creates the downward strike? Well, you're starting to see the right arm has to have a role in that, right? But it, it's, it's a whole body of work on creating a sequence in your golf swing that allows the shaft in the left arm to leverage this way into the golf ball. Most people, I, I, I tell you what, I, I, there's not one lesson I give at Golf Tech. If, if I do some outdoor stuff, we're talking about some other things. But when I'm in, in the location, there's not one lesson I, I don't give without video. They all have video. 99% of golfers look like this at impact. Okay? Which way is that club moving? Moving back up. Right? As soon as this club head passes this, it's moving this way. Alright, so how are we gonna how are we gonna be able to hit down on the golf ball? There's one way, you can chop down like this, and even when you do this, if this out outweighs this, you'll hit down on it. But uh, you'll have some bad, bad stuff going on there. So we know that a divot should happen where? After or before you hit the golf ball? After. Okay. So I mean, that tells you right there. It's got to be moving down. So this is probably the hardest thing to do, and the hardest thing for me to teach my students who don't do this naturally is to be able to sequence their body properly with their arms to create this angle so that they can straight down on it. Now, if you if you notice. I'm going to put a ball here. Everyone that's not kind of straight on is going to have a tough time seeing because of their angle. Here I am. My head's slightly behind the golf ball. Top of my backswing. Sequencing down. Now, where's my head? Do I have to go this way with my head to, to hit down on it? Absolutely not. Okay? I had to be patient enough with my right arm to sequence my body properly so that I can get in this position. If you guys were in my body right now, you'd be like, that doesn't feel right, but it is. Uh, so, like I said, there's, there's right and wrong ways to do this, but you do need to learn how to take the divot after the ball, preferably a little bit better sequence that allows that club to travel from the inside and for you to lean the shaft. You gotta shift your weight.
How many people have seen this? Am I shifting my weight? Shifting my weight. What's that going to, I mean, is that, does that have any power there? There's no pivot, is there? So, without, without a good pivot, you're just not going to be able to create any speed at all in a golf swing. So you got, got this stuff going on. I see that all the time. So, how do we shift our weight? Only got one club over here. Oh well, you guys have to use your imagination a little bit. Then I have a club laying right there. Actually, you know, I'll use my club here. Now, if I don't do this to shift my weight, how am I going to shift it? First of all, that's just the slide, isn't it? There's no pivot there at all. Pretend there's a line coming right up my leg and I can't push through that line. Okay? Now, uh, what's actually shifting my weight here? Anybody? Okay. I mean, my hips aren't going side to side. They're pivoting. But why, why is my weight more on my right side right now? What makes up the bulk of my, of my body? Especially with my skinny legs. My torso, right? So if I'm turning this way and my head's slightly behind the golf ball, the ball's pretty close to the center of my stance. Now, I'm not doing this, right? It's, it's only a slight, slight bit, maybe a two-inch movement with the head to the right. My weight's over my right side. Now, because my lower, my lower body's just pivoting, my upper body is turning over my right side, okay? Now, that is gonna pro provide a very strong right leg to be able to drive off into your downswing. So people want to work on their downswing, but until they can, until they can pivot and, and set the club at the top properly, it's, you're going to be, you know, on your head against the wall. So you want to be able to be able to start that motion from, from a position that makes it possible to create the right downswing. This is my favorite one. It looks kind of silly. Uh, stick your butt out. Now, if somebody's <laughs> If somebody's set up like this, that's probably good info, right? They need to stick their butt on a little bit more. Okay? <laughs> Does that look silly? <laughs> All right. So, this is what I see a lot of too. And then I ask, the first question I ask is, does your back hurt? Because they look like this. Okay? Now, is their butt sticking out? Yeah, of course it is. <laughs> and they'll tell me, you know, Mitch, I was, I was told I needed to stick my butt out. You're doing a good job. <laughs> It's way out there. So the issue with that is that that's called posterior tilt, okay, of the pelvis. So what does that do? First of all, it hurts my back. I can't even do it. Then if I try and turn my back from that position, that's going to hurt even worse, right? So what I have to do with those students is, you know, first, first thing I said, like I said, I asked them, is your back hurt? And they say yes. I said, well, this is why. Oh, I, I didn't know that. We try to work them into a more neutral position. Some people are stuck in that position, by the way. Some people are just, they walk around like this, okay? Unfortunately, they're gonna have to do something that's gonna work them work their way out of that. And I'll even do, I'll, during a half hour lesson, I'll do, I'll do 20 minutes on just trying to get them to be able to, to, to coordinate their pelvis, okay? The motion of their pelvis. So I'll have them do this in a golf posture to support themselves. And I'll have them, this looks silly, don't laugh. And I'll have them control that, be able to move that. Because if you cannot do that, and you're stuck like this, guess what your legs look like when your hips start to turn? Think about this. They look stiff as heck, right? So when your hips start to turn from this position, now my pelvis is really tilted forward. Now, in golf tech, we have a sensor that, that's right here. It's called the hip band sensor. Now, when your hips do this, your hip bend sensor goes like this, way off the charts because it's tilted this way, right? Now, as your hips rotate, your left hip is going to go way down, your right hip's going to come way up, isn't it? Okay, what are your legs going to look like? When your left hip goes way down, and the one comes up way up. You see this stuff. Okay, I see people's legs going all over the place all the time. So, one of the biggest keys I have to I have to build some type of base for their golf swing. First thing is, is if they're stuck in this position here, we got we got to get them out of that. We got to get them so that they can coordinate. You know, I see this a lot of times too. Is that it? Is that it? No, that's not it. That's it. Okay. Now my hips are on a more level axis. 
as I rotate my hips now, you can see how much more level that they're going to be rolling or rotating. And you can see my knees and everything can be more stable down there. Impact position is the same as the dress. Okay. Don't raise your hand. I don't want. I don't want you to be uh, thinking that I'm trying to kid you here. But <clears throat> the dress position, impact position. So you saw an impact. I had not turned my body. And I was just like this at impact. Okay. Would you hit a baseball like that? I was a baseball player, so this is a little natural for me. But would you hit a baseball like that? Right here, right in front of you? Never. You'd have to turn open to the pitcher, right? And hit the ball, meet the ball way out in front of you. Okay? So golf's no different. I see this all the time. That's what we're looking for. Take the club back more inside. Does everyone know what more inside means? If this is my target line, right down this, there you go, right down the dial. If the club comes back like this, this is that's called inside. This will be outside. So taking the club back more to the inside is going to help me swing and approach the ball from the inside. Very, very rarely is that the case. Like I said before, when, when people just crank this right arm like this, the first move is this way, and they're trying as hard as they can. A lot of times that back swing is because they think that this is going to help them swing from the inside. All right, so we get them doing some stuff where they go out loop it in and make some really easy swings that way just to get uh, why you if you really want to get better at this game why you need to have a coach okay not just a teacher i would say 20 percent of what i do is, is teaching all right? right right now what we're doing right now is i'm teaching all right i'm, I'm giving you information you guys are trying to absorb it and trying to communicate the best i can with you uh 80 of what i do is coaching that's that's actually the harder part Getting you to intellectually understand concepts is easy, for the most part. Getting your body, getting you to, to, to move your body the way I want it to, and the way you understand it needs to move now, is the hard part. So through a lot of repetitive drills and things like that, you need to have somebody that's going to coach you through that, because most people just don't, do not have the skill set, the knowledge base to understand if they're even doing it right. Okay, so some of these drills I was giving you, the square drill, things like that, these are some things that can break through some of that, but you still need to have somebody there. From the audience, thanks for listening through my lecture. Anybody? I'm going to be hanging around here for a little bit longer. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to be over at the Northern Ohio PGA teaching for the next couple hours just helping out with those guys, okay?